So today I want to talk about 12, 24, 48 volt systems, what the differences are, what the advantages are, what the disadvantages are, and more importantly, what is the proper application of each voltage. Now before I get into this, I know a lot of people out there have very strong opinions about this, so please feel free to leave a comment below if you disagree, um, if I've left something out, or if you just have a different experience. So I welcome all that input because I want people to get as much information as they possibly can. So I'm going to start with 12 volt. So the advantage of 12 volt is it's everywhere. I mean, if you had an RV or a car with a 12 volt system in it and a component broke, you could literally stop at a Walmart anywhere in the country and get a replacement part. You know, you could get a battery, of course, you could get inverter, you could get wires, uh, you could get almost everything. Maybe not a solar panel, but you could get a lot of the components. So they're very, very common. They're very inexpensive. You could build a small 12 volt system for very little money. So for example, you could go to Harbor Freight and you could get a solar panel, an inverter, a battery, some of the wiring for hardly anything. So they're very, very inexpensive and they're very, very common. So some of the downsides are um, the wiring. So because it's so low voltage, 12 volt, obviously, um, if you're moving a lot of watts through it, that means you have to move that energy through higher amperage. So higher amperage means bigger wire, bigger wire means more expense. You know, they're not really the best choice for a big system because they're really not that scalable. They really don't have a lot of energy density and they really aren't that efficient. They don't effectively produce a lot of energy. So what's the best application for a 12 volt system? Well, let's say you had a 10 by 10 cabin and you wanted to run a television, a radio, a couple of lights, uh, charge your phone, maybe have um, an internet modem or router, 12 volt system would be perfect. And again, you could go to Harbor Freight, you could get all these components, spend maybe a few hundred dollars, and you would have a great system to run all those things. So that's where the, that's where 12 volt systems really shine is in really small systems that you're not gonna need to scale up, uh, you're not gonna need uh, to push a lot of heavy inductive loads, uh, uh, 12 volt really shines. So now let's get into 24 volt. 24 volt is kind of a weird voltage because it doesn't quite have the power of the 48 volt and it doesn't really have the accessibility of a 12 volt system. For example, you can't go into Walmart or Harbor Freight and get components for a 24 volt system other than maybe some wiring. So it's a little bit harder to get. You have to plan a little bit more. Uh, if you're somewhere remote, you're gonna have to order stuff online. So it's not as accessible to get the 24 volt stuff but it has a lot more advantages over a 12 volt system. To start with, the wiring. It's 24 volt versus 12 volt. So that means off the top, your wiring can be smaller. The components tend to be better. And what I mean by better is they more efficiently and more effectively take DC power and turn it into AC power so you can do more things with it. For example, an inverter. You can get what they call a low frequency inverter on 24 volt, and you can push any kind of inductive load, you know, well pump, air conditioner, uh, anything with a motor. With a 12 volt system, that's going to be pretty hard to find. Most of those inverters are going to be what they call high frequency inverters, and you're going to be limited to what you can do with them. You know, like I was saying, a TV, radio, uh, small uh, electronic stuff like that. With a 24 volt system, you can push bigger loads. It has more power. So it has a lot more flexibility, uh, a lot more scalability, uh, a lot more power density than a 12 volt system. And some of the disadvantages are um, the components aren't as readily available and it doesn't have the flexibility of a 48 volt system. So what is the best usage of a 24 volt system? Well, let's go back to that 10 by 10 cabin. So let's say now in, uh, in addition to you know some lights, and TV and radio and stuff like that, you wanna run uh, an air conditioning unit or you want to uh, pump water in from a you know, from a well. Well, with a 24 volt system, you can get a low frequency inverter that can easily power out that kind of those kind of inductive loads. So if you're building a system that is 3,000 watts and maybe you know, 10 to 12,000 watt hours storage, 24 volt is a really good choice because it's less expensive. Uh, it can convert that type of loads pretty efficiently. You know, again, you can get the low frequency inverters. Uh, the components are not are relatively inexpensive, uh, so it's a really good choice for a medium size setup. You couldn't do that with a 12 volt setup. 
So 24 volt is a really good setup for that type of size, you know, where you don't have to go to the expense of getting a 48 volt system, but you have a lot of the, a lot, but you have a lot more power as compared to a 12 volt system. So now let's talk about 48 volt systems and they have a lot of power and a lot of advantages. Well, let's talk about some of the disadvantages first. One of the biggest disadvantages is cost. If you're gonna build a 48 volt system, be prepared to spend a fair amount of money. The batteries, the inverters, the charge controllers, all the components are gonna be considerably more expensive than a 12 or 24 volt system. And they're not gonna be as accessible. Again, I'll go back to my Harbor Freight example. You're not gonna walk into Harbor Freight and buy 48 volt components. So you're gonna to have to order them online. So if something breaks down, um, it's gonna take you a while to, to get that part back in. So they're more expensive, and they're less accessible. A couple of the disadvantages, but there are tons of advantages. You can power anything with a 48 volt system. You can get a 12,000 watt inverter. I mean, it can power your entire house. Another advantage of 48 volt system, which is kind of weird considering what I just said a few minutes ago, is it's actually, even though it's more expensive to buy it, it's actually much more cost effective to have a 20, 48 volt system. Um, the wiring's less expensive, and per watt, the components are going to be much less expensive, but there is that much bigger upfront cost. Uh, another thing is scalability. If you have a 12 volt system, you're pretty much stuck with that. You're not going to be able to run your house with it. You know, it, it's, it's not going to be scalable. But a 48 volt system is very scalable. So let's go back to that 10 by 10 cabin. So let's say now you, you're, um, your wife wants you to take that 10 by 10 cabin and turn it into a 50 by 50 house and she wants a two-ton central air conditioner, she wants uh, an on-demand electric water heater, uh, she wants an electric stove, um, she has um, uh, hair dryers and curlers and you know, all sorts of appliances. Well, that 48 volt system can now be expanded and can run everything. I mean, it can run an entire house easily. So the efficiency, power out, scalability, everything about a 48 volt system is far superior to any other system. So let's say that that 10 by 10 cabin, you're not sure what you want to do in five years or 10 years. Maybe you will expand it. Well, then you don't want to start with a small system. You want to start with a 48 volt system because you're going to be able to expand it to anything. That's kind of a quick overview of the differences between 12, 24, and 48 volt systems. Again, if anyone out there has input, um, if I miss something, uh, if you disagree with something, uh, love to hear uh, your uh, input so please leave a comment below like comment share subscribe as always I've enjoyed talking to everybody and I look forward to uh, seeing everybody later thanks